Yeah. It's busy. Oh, it's busy. Wow. I know. No, it's, it's a lot. Wow. It's a lot. Of fun. But <laughs> she, she's like, oh my gosh. Awesome. Oh, yeah, turn we it. Are yeah, we're. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome to another episode of Co Founders. We have amazing guests today. We have Beth Johnson and Matt Flynn. Introduce yourselves. Tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and then we're going to get right into it. Beth Johnson, Matt Flynn, we're married together and we own a private money lending business in Virginia. Okay. And um, can you tell the audience when you say private money, what, what does that mean? We provide short-term loans using real estate as collateral. Okay. Most yeah. of our clients are typically real estate investors, um, probate cases, uh, any time that someone needs to get a loan for business purpose but maybe not, can't qualify conventionally for a loan, they'll come to us. Okay, very cool, very cool. So what, what, how did you guys get into that? I have a background <laughs> in uh, real estate, you know, from okay. the early 2000s, and so I did uh, fix and flips when fix and flips weren't really known as that. Yeah. And then um, I was fortunate to get a job with Wells Fargo, and when I was at Wells Fargo, I saw some clients that weren't being serviced or their needs weren't being met. And so I reached out to some of my clients and who had some money, and they were able to help them. And so that kind of led us down to this path of being able to help people borrow money for whatever their business needs were, using their real estate as collateral, but okay. not having to go through the hoops uh, or requirements that banks require. Uh, so that's so if we how need if we need some money, we can we can gladly come to you guys and. Get a special rate. Correct. Rig. As long as you have some uh, real estate as collateral, uh, absolutely. We're good to go. Okay. Let's go back to that. You yes. have to have something as collateral. Something. It is a securitized loan. But well, some people will come to us with yeah. um, boats yeah, or um, Rolls Royces. But really? Yeah. Unless they give us the keys, we say no. <laughs> got it. Got it. Holding titles, not so great. Not, okay. Yeah. And how long? So doing? we've been doing this together for about five years now. Very cool. So um, when I was at Wells Fargo, I was kind of filtering out through the process, and uh, Beth was at Microsoft, and I started uh, reaching out to her, and she's like, hey, I can do all these wonderful things for you, and then she kind of took the reins, and here we are five years later. Wow. And you're both yeah. full-time in it. Full-time. We both quit our jobs. She quit Microsoft. I quit Wells Fargo, and uh, wow. now we're in the trenches together. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. So did you guys... Uh, when you made that decision to kind of go all in, um, did that happen gradually? Was it like one of you kind of quit and then the corporate world and they went into it? Was it both of you kind of cut ties and said, we're doing this now? How did that work out? Well, I did part-time consulting at Microsoft, so okay. it's very easy for me to step in and help him. I yeah. Thought, and I can operationalize these things for you. Oh, you need a website? I can do that. So mm -hmm. um, I was able to help him out pretty easily, although I didn't know what private money was. Um, I think we went on a date, like a first or second date, and I probably went home and Googled what it was because <laughs> even though I grew up in real estate with my dad, um, he never really disclosed the financing side of things, Got so it. I had no idea. Yeah. So I learned about it and said, I can help you with this, and he quit first after a couple of years um, doing them both in tandem, and then I quit six months after that. Wow. Very cool. We just grew organically so fast, we couldn't yeah. do both anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, we've been, we're in a similar situation, so I'm in the corporate world as well. Um, sort of like consulting kind of, you know, kind of field. Uh, and then, you know, so we, we're in, we've been in that transition for now three years. So, and in the similar, in similar kind of uh, aspects, Lisa, day to day, I come in, consult, marketing, business development, keep the, you know, keep growing the business where I can. And then, you know, to the point where we can, have it as our exit strategy, really, at the end of the day. That's the goal, right? Um, so with five years in, talk to us about what, from year one to year five, like what did, what did year one look like for you guys as you started figuring this thing out? So how it kind of really transpired was that when I was at Wells Fargo, I, I saw a lot of clients who weren't being helped that I thought, uh, you know, we might be able to help in another way. Yeah. And so when I started reaching out to my past clients who, who were investors of mine, uh, they said, well, yeah, I'd like to uh, get into private money lending again. It's a nice return on their uh, investment. So, and it's all sec uh, securitized, which they like. So I started reaching out to them. We started doing one here, one there. And the next thing I know, I was starting to do it more and more private money than I was spending time at the bank. 
-hmm. And so uh, once I got about a half a dozen of my investors back on board, uh, I was obviously Beth was now chiming in and I was starting to lean on her for some help. And mm -hmm. then uh, this kind of grew from there, uh, more so because of her. But uh, yeah. uh, it's been oh, a great welcome. ride. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other employees, or is it just the two of you? We do so, now. Yeah. Um, we have uh, two part-time employees. We plucked them out of our circle of trust because um, private money deals with a lot of really sensitive information mm. and, and clients, so we wanted to protect that. We didn't want to bring on somebody that may go off and go broker loans or go work for a competitor. So we have Emily Schreiber that does all, all of our um, operations, and we have Scott Walker who works in our business development and loan processing. And then we just hired an intern this summer, so. Wow, yeah. very cool. Little E, we call him. Yeah, yeah. nice. It's a neighbor kid. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, and he's in his senior year at Boise State, and he um, really enterprising. He got his real estate license last summer, so we told him at the beginning of his senior year to come find us when school ended, and we would give him a job. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. it's been we working out great. We need to be thinking more interns, too. Well, we have enough kids that one of them we could do. probably Somebody's do it. We do. Somebody's got to step up. <laughs> and by do the way, we're, think... we're a blended. So we are a blended family of five kids. Uh -huh. uh, my older two are the um, uh, 17 and 15. Then uh, Lisa, uh, Lisa's or our middle child, 13. And then Lisa and I have uh, the two little ones, five and, and three. So, again, kids. Yes, uh, we're a blended family as well. Okay. Um, I have a daughter, Mia, she's 16, and Beth has a, a son and daughter, Caleb and Rachel, very and they are 11 and 7. Okay. And as, we're very fortunate because they're peas and carrots, they get along really well, so yeah. it's a bit of easy transition for us. We're very fortunate. Yeah, that, that's, that is a, I think we, when we got married, it was because the kids were older, uh, Peyton was the, the youngest at mm -hmm. the time. So it was definitely trying to figure out how it was all going to blend together and mesh and um, it's still, we're at a good place, but it's still an uh, interesting dynamic between uh, our two little ones that we have had together, the older two, and then Peyton in the middle. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like, it's, a, it's it's like it, a crock pot. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it really is. is. It's it like, is. it's not an instant pot. It's not fast. <laughs> it's not, yeah. You can't expect it to happen quickly. And it's just, it's a crock pot and it yeah. changes. Like it just sort of evolves and it does get better. Yeah. With time, so. so we got really lucky with four or five years in between and the boy in the yeah. middle. There was no competition. So. Um, if, if Mia wanted to do makeup videos and TikTok or Musical.ly, she'd grab the little one. If she wanted to play sports or do um, Fortnite, she'd grab my son. So okay. she was always, That's she cool. always had a fan somebody. base, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes awesome. three's a crowd, but. Yeah. They, they got along from the onset, which we were very fortunate for. That's very cool. How are they with the business? Because I know, like, with us, our kids our kids love it because they love the benefit of it. They love the vacations we get to take because we have a business. Um, but there are times they kind of, they're like, you guys work all the time. Oh, because we, we work from yeah. home. So how are, the the, how are the kids with it? Well, our, our, our kids... Um, try to stay out of the office as much as possible, but obviously their attention span is very short. And so they're constantly coming down, you know, mom, dad, hey, you know, we need this or that. So it is a challenge sometimes, but uh, they like being able to, especially in the summer when there's no school, yeah. being able to stay at home. And, you know, we try to give them as much attention as we can, but- Yeah, yeah we have no good. child care this summer. Yeah, which makes no it kind of interesting, and, yeah. And, uh, you know, we don't have nannies or anything like that. We, do we have, have a trampoline. Dog. That's kind of yeah, a no, we do, Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. We're tramp. like, go zip go, it up. Zip up and go jump. Uh, and one of the best things uh, we ever bought was a spring-free trampoline. So it's kind of like our netted babysitter out in the backyard. Yeah, we said the same. So thing. they live on that thing. Yeah. So that's, but we also uh, have the Xbox downstairs and like a little art station for my daughter. So yeah. oftentimes when we thought that that would be our sanctuary to get work done mm -hmm. and they'd go elsewhere and watch TV or whatever... All five of us are downstairs. Yeah. We're working and catching up on stuff after we pick them up from school, and they're playing Fortnite, and my daughter's drawing me posters that says I'm the best mom. That's so, awesome. Yeah, you so it works out You can't bad. really argue with yeah. that. Not really. Yeah. Or she'll make me, like, little folders or with cards in it that say free massage. Okay. <laughs> down uh -huh. in my chair and give me a massage. Well, like, that's pretty cool. This is great. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. Our kids love that they can... Uh, have a place where they can come home to and they know that we're always going to be there and so that security yeah. blanket is always there for them and yeah. it is kind of a challenge obviously when they come down all the time but 
we whine about it, but we don't really whine about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. whine about it. I mean, they, they do say you're always working, but we remind them very politely that their other parents are leaving very early in the morning and going to an office for eight, nine, ten hours and then mm-hmm. commuting back home for an hour. We don't do that. We've, they've never taken a bus. You know, well, I guess my kids take the bus to the bus stop, and I pick them up there half mm-hmm. the time. But yeah. we're always there, so yeah, that's um, give and take. It's interesting. Yeah. It's because um, we've heard exactly all the same things. You you know, and what um, the interesting part about, and I think you said it, it. I think it's more in the moment. Like if you're busy on something, and they're like coming down. In our in our case, they'd come to us while we're you know typing something. Hey, we want to play or want to whatever, and you're like, hey, I, I, you don't have time right now. I got to get this done. Um, that becomes the inconvenience. But then, at least in our lives, um, but then when they walk away, you're like, oh, crap. Actually, it's done now. Now I can go and actually pay attention and you know hang out. Um, have you have you guys have had any challenges around? the environment, the workspace environment, um, as you've been building the business from year one to year five, is there, um, has there been any conversations around, is it time to expand beyond the home office? Um, is a home office going to be, you know, kind of headquarter for, I mean, do you guys even need a space? I mean, walk us through kind of, because I think our audience are probably in the similar situation where some folks are running a business from home. I think we did for the first year, right? Year, t- and we're sort of years. a hybrid now. I mean, it's we're a hybrid now home, too. Yeah, here. our home. Yeah, it was so small that we didn't have. We couldn't even get anywhere to like. Well, it's the kitchen get, table, and then the kids would yeah. get home. We from yeah, yeah, that. that's how we started. The yeah. hardest part with that table. though is that the kids get home from school and they're like, "Hey, yep. I want to tell you all yeah, about you my day." Yeah, you have to clear and yeah. everything. And I'm I like, hated "Wait, that. it's three thirty. I know. I'm like, if I was at an office, I wouldn't be available yeah. until yeah. after five that's o'clock. Point, so yeah, just yeah. Well, give it was a tear me down and set up too. I mean, yeah. And I didn't. We needed a war room. I needed a board so that we could chart up. I mean, if you're only doing one or two loans a month, it's really not hard to keep track of your portfolio. If you keep growing like that, then having to take it down and figure out where you were and yeah. start and stop that actually decreases yeah. your productivity we substantially. Used to, I just remembered this I actually forgot that was even there but we used to have this fireplace in the middle of our oh, yeah, that's right. it separated oh it was <laughs> terrible but it separated so our funny. living room from our dining room we've since renovated the house so it's gone but we had a huge whiteboard on the side of the fireplace, on the side of the fireplace. and <laughs> that was like our dinner table would look at, at the whiteboard and I remember we had a party one time and I was like what in the world do we do with this whiteboard so I'm like trying to cover it with like I'm like I could hang some pictures on it yeah, or, yeah. but it was our office like that was our life is like that's yeah. what we thought and we did that the first time about a year we didn't even have a whiteboard maybe? in our kitchen we yeah. just yeah. had everything on the kitchen counter mm-hmm. and then you know grab the kids and then we try to maybe work downstairs or do something like that but then uh, we were able to convert our basement into our office and now we got whiteboards all over the place and uh, uh, yeah we haven't really talked about you know expansion yet but yeah. uh, at the pace and growth that we are at now of 2x uh, it's probably going to be something we're have to well, yeah. discuss. Yeah, that's not yeah, totally yeah. true. I mean, we probably address scaling on a monthly basis because yeah. when we were so busy in like year one, year two, and we literally were going 2x each year, which is a good problem yeah. to mm-hmm. have. But w- we were stressed out. I mean, I went from working part time and really being exclusively a mom first, and then work second yeah. to struggling with how to manage all of the influx of business that we had. So we kept talking repeatedly about, do we want to keep taking on new business? Investors mm-hmm. would come to us um, through word of mouth. We've never advertised. We didn't want to turn it away. We figured right. the well would run, di- you know, run dry eventually. So we talked about it quarterly. Do we just turn away business or do we hire somebody? It totally changes the landscape of things. It's totally so different. Hard. And it's, it's so hard. hard to, I mean, we totally understand. I mean, that is the hardest thing as you're growing. I mean, when you're established, I guess you can make that decision to be like, okay, we're going to turn the spigot off for a minute and maintain our current base. But when you're growing, you know, it could be a handful of customers that go away and all of a sudden your business is now, you know, it's, it's in the hole. And um, it's a continual kind of balancing out where, you know, at least in our business, we've had that similar uh, scenario where it, we always ask, okay, is it time to stop taking clients on? Mm-hmm. And we always go back to like, okay, well, if we do, is the message getting out there like, hey, they're not taking no more clients? That's always our. That was been That's our exactly fear. Exactly what we yeah. talk about. It's too. like they're gonna be, they're gonna know, and then all of a sudden, it just trickles throughout the market. Like, oh yeah, Moncor's not taking any more clients anymore, because uh, we've actually have heard that. Uh, you know, we would 
somebody would, uh, we'd reach out to somebody and we'd do a presentation in office and we they'd come up to us after the pre oh we we thought you weren't taking any more clients mm-hmm. like heck how did you even know that well because we we didn't take on John for whatever reason or whoever that was. And uh, and it got around, so we were like, okay, we got to be really careful. On it's how a we, fine line it's because fine the other, the flip side is, you don't want to take on so much business that you can't you handle it, and your service yeah. level goes down. That's yeah. what we talk about. So <laughs> it's it's so all about. the time, yeah. right? Because so, at some point, it becomes really painful more than yes. it is yes. enjoyable. Yes. yes. And so, and I don't know. For some people, maybe they're they become an entrepreneur more intentionally. We did not act intentionally. It was always his goal to uh, restart his lending business. Um, Because he stopped it after 08. But that was not my thing. I mean, like I said, I went home and Googled what it was. So (laughs) for me, it was just a way to help out someone I loved and help him succeed. So to to go from being a part-time consultant to being a full-time business owner... With which really, is more than full time. Which is I mean, way more than real time, really yeah. and even Weekends, double so, holidays. given that he's really our our front guy, our sales guy, and I'm the back end. I'm the operational aspect of it. I'm the strategy and the leadership for the team. Yeah. That requires so much more, um, and so it's been a challenge because it's not like we walked into this with a business plan. Yeah, <laughs> there was nothing intentional yeah. about this whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. If you'd asked me five years ago if this was going to happen, I'd say. No chance in hell, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm very fortunate. We're lucky, but sure. it's provided a lot of challenges for us, yeah. to be sure. Well, let me ask. I, th- I think you bring up a good point in the sense that it wasn't intentional, but do you believe that your experiences both at Microsoft and Wells Fargo collectively within the corporate structure allowed you to kind of accelerate some of the growth and actually organize better? I think so. For me personally, having a corporate background yeah. um, really provided a lot of structure uh, that I don't think that some entrepreneurs have because maybe they don't have experience in the corporate world. Yeah. Um, but in his world in banking and stuff, obviously, it was uh, a pretty natural fit for him. Right, right. It, it was a natural fit for me, but <clears throat> honestly, the, without her, there's no possibility I'd be where I'm at today. Mm. So, I mean, the... Did you pay him to say that? Uh, <laughs> before she walked in, like, hey. uh, hey. <laughs> the amount of detailed work that's required for our business, where she can take on that those responsibilities, yeah. where that is where I would lack. Right. I mean, we we've been very fortunate to be able to balance these challenges yeah, out, yeah. and so and also with Beth being able to bring her good friend Scott and Emily, and you know us being able to reach out to other people to help us with our business. You know, allocation is a beautiful thing. Mm. So that's one thing we're trying to learn is how do we not take on such a burden? And like hiring Scott and Emily now has made it so we don't have to carry this burden and they can help us so we can do, be more efficient. And also, again, our ultimate goal is really to work at home and be with our kids. Yeah. That's, what really, that's what we really wanted. And that's why we question sometimes when is enough enough because we're at a point now, obviously, we can grow as much as we want or we can stay where we're at and try to spend time with our kids yeah. because that's that's why we did this yeah right yeah, so size. that was our ultimate goal now we have that ultimate goal now we're here where do we go from here yeah. right wow so yeah. it's a, that's insightful because um, I think a lot of people get into business whether together or with, with other founders or whatever and intentionally right and they're like oh we're gonna grow this out and then you get to a point where you hit whatever that is success, whether it's a revenue number. You and then and then it's like now what? Mm-hmm. So you're five years in. Um, what what is what have you guys talked about? Like what is the end game for for you guys? We still don't have one. Don't I mean, again, that. you think you assume that maybe we had some financial goals associated yeah, yeah. with getting into business together, and it really wasn't. I think most couples get into business because they enjoy spending time together, yeah. and it's a dream. They're they have an idea, and um, they kind of nurture it that way. Financial goals really weren't any sort. I didn't have. We didn't have a PL to last yeah. year. I, I won't lie. Yeah, yeah. We're kind of making it up as we go, yeah. and it was just really the benefit of being able to spend time together. Yeah. I love the transparency because I think I think there's a misconception that entrepreneurs potentially or business owners, especially five years three. I mean, because we're in the 
we're still always figuring something out. We're like, crap, we don't have that together. We got to, we got to figure that out. We got. Well, there's stuff you don't know. You don't, you don't know. know. Yeah. And it's like in oh, running a business, absolutely. you wear. I mean, yeah. you look at Amazon and how many departments does Amazon have? Every business needs that. Mm-hmm. You know, they need an HR department and yeah. and a tax department, whatever they are. I don't even know, obviously. <laughs> but like every business needs that. But when you run that business, it's you. Yeah. yeah. And so I mean, I I had we have an amazing bookkeeper, by the way. If you are interested, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, but I just had a call with her yesterday yesterday um because something kind of slipped through the cracks my fault but I was like I don't even know like I don't even know what I'm what I don't know and so I it's it's a challenge right because you are wearing every single hat of the entire business well and I yeah no go ahead well all the pieces of the puzzle never seem to fit you have to figure out a way to make the circle fit into the peg right right every day is always a challenge and so you just never know what you're going to run into the next day, so you just do the best you can every day. Yeah. And, we just you know. figured out, I mean, we were just tackling what was ever in front of our face, to mm-hmm. be honest with you, because yeah. business yeah, yeah. was just so yeah. fast and furious, and um, private lending is a little bit of a nuanced business. You know, every title report comes back differently, every property, every loan request, the dollar amount, the encumbrances, the property, the project, everything is different, so it's really hard to develop any sort of muscle mm-hmm. memory. So it's just taken us years to get to a place where operationally things actually run smoothly so then we can tackle stuff like financial acumen. Right. That was just always the yeah. last. Why? Because mm-hmm. it was it seriously urgent. the one deficiency I had. Mm-hmm. Being in the corporate world, I had a lot of process and project management, HR, team management, marketing and advertising. The one thing I did not have any experience in is financial analysis and reporting. Mm-hmm. Well, that's really important. Yeah. And I knew it, but... We were just doing whatever came our way. Yeah. So Alex says it best, and I love the way that he describes kind of how we build this business. Because we didn't, we it's it's hard to say we weren't intentional because we were very intentional, but we were unintentionally intentional. Like we, it's really like our sixth baby. I mean, mm-hmm. it, this business came about sort of by accident. And he's always said we're building the plane as we're flying. You know, it's like oh that wing's going down. Let's we need something here to get it back up. And that's sort of what it feels like when you're building a business. Like you don't go into it having everything figured out. I mean, you may have a business plan and you may have an idea of where you want it to go, but there's things you just don't know. You just, you don't know. I think some of our best decisions have come in moments of crises. When I really thought that this is it, I'm going to end this. I can't deal anymore. And then all of a sudden I get this like, I I get some (laughs) moment and that's how I hired Emily. That's how I got Scott. That's how I joined um, EO Accelerator program. Mm -hmm. That came out of. What is that? What's that? Uh, Entrepreneurs Organization is a, uh, it's for entrepreneurs, obviously. It's a networking and uh, mentorship type of program. For EO, uh, it would be, there's like a minimum threshold for gross revenue to bring Mm -hmm. in, a million and above. Then they have this um, accelerator program that is for $9.99 and below for small business owners to want to join. And they provide uh, learning opportunities and workshops and um, an accountability group and stuff like that. It's been great because being an entrepreneur, as you know, can be very lonely, especially when you work with your spouse. And And if you're at odds and you're like, I'm not going to complain to you about you. I need to go somewhere. It's like (laughs) if he doesn't have the financial acumen and I know I don't have it, but I know we need it. Where do I go? And so Mm -hmm. the EO Accelerator program has been a a godsend for me to be able to go and lament about the challenges of running a business, lament about the challenges of working with a husband that has a very different skill set and a very different approach than I do, which is both good and bad. Um, And then just to get some feedback from other people and a different lens to look through and how to attack, you know, attack our business. So talk to us more about that, about, because I mean, I think a lot of people are listening to this who are in business with someone very, very close to them. How do you navigate that relationship? You have a business relationship and you have a personal relationship, but they're so intertwined. So how do you navigate that? Well, it's challenging. Like, um, you know, it's hard to sometimes keep personal and business separate, right? And they always co-mingle and trying to... uh, keep them separate is it's really impossible it's very difficult especially when you work from home right? especially because we yeah. work from home right and so you know some days we have good days some days we don't and so you just have to learn how to for me what i've learned is how to communicate better with her also how to control my emotions a little bit more not try to be so controlling take things personally, uh, take things personally. <laughs> so 
the hardest part of actually being a business owner is actually learning to step back and listen, and that was my hardest thing because I've yeah. always been kind of a bull in a china shop where I think I know everything. So having to sit back and listen and, and uh, absorb what's going on around me has been very challenging for me. So I think listening and well, especially since he's had, you know, 20 plus years of experience in conventional and private lending, you're going to let somebody net new come in who has a corporate background in training and development and leadership. Like, what do I have to bring to the table? Yeah. Right. So it was an exercise in humility on both our parts to figure out how to work That's together. Awesome. We're so different. We're, I mean, Part of our success, I feel, has been because we've just been genuine. We've just been ourselves. People like that. I feel yeah. like that's our secret sauce. But at the same time, I, I always describe us as a mullet. We're like <laughs> business in front. Party in the back. Party in the back. <laughs> <laughs> but it works really well, right? Yeah, yeah. Because um, you need both of that. He's yeah. the gas. I'm the brakes. Yeah. So I it, love that. It that's works awesome. well, but it means that at some point in time, you need to – you're never always going to agree. So you have to figure out – who's going to be that tiebreaker or what's going to be the tiebreaker because you're going to be at a standoff eventually, yeah. right? There's yeah. there are some points oh, yeah. where you're just at an impasse. What do you do? Do um, you have, have uh, outside of uh, the few employees and interns, Do you have you ever done like an advisory board or anything of that nature for the business? Not necessarily a board, but we work very closely with our attorney who mm-hmm. um, drafts up drafts up all of our loan docs. He acts as our um, closing agent and as the trustee. Okay. So obviously and we're- And therapist sometimes. And, yeah. He's yeah. our marriage therapist. We've gone to him, I'm not kidding you, <laughs> at least a couple times a year where we've sat down in front of him for probably over an hour and yeah. just let it go. Yeah. And um, he'll very politely tell Matt that um, the wife is right. <laughs> and if she disagrees, then um, he should stop. Whether that's totally absorbed, that's that's okay. But yeah. <laughs> Gary has typically been our um, tiebreaker, and then now that we have a team, we we just address it as a team. So, so we've made rules over time where one of them is um, we don't talk about like if we can t- sense some tension on how to move forward on something, we don't talk about it alone anymore. Mm-hmm. We wait till a team meeting or we address it as a team. That way, it can't become personal. Okay. It's not just oh, like my good. opinion versus his. Like um, it is really the team weighing in because they really do a lot of our daily work. They should have a say in it as well. I want them to own what they do and to be able to provide some input and add value. That's really wise. So. I like that. And it is That's nice cool. to hear our staff, you know, because not only are they uh, – you know, employees, but also we want to educate them so they understand the process sure. better, right? Because obviously knowledge is power. So if we can help them understand the power uh, or our business, that just it's only going to help us. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. We want them to be mini-me's. They, mm-hmm. Emily needs to be, and she's becoming like me. Oh, yeah. Um, Such a proud mom over there. <laughs> it, it, yeah. It's like your own kids, well, right? It is. It's Truth like be told, I, st- I mean, we went, we were in the same sorority together in college. We were roommates afterwards. We worked at T-Mobile together for about 10 years and um so i knew exact i knew her character i knew yeah. her work ethic um and so it was easy to bring her on yeah. and she has an eagle eye and attention to detail which is needed and then scott's my best friend from college um it's her husband and he's very affable and friendly and um detail oriented so he's able to work really hand in hand with matt on the front end of things so yeah the goal is yes. to really to make them um, eventually become uh, have some sort of ownership of the company too and, and work with us for the long range long, long range yeah you know I think uh, it, we've I think we've been learning this in our business is if you don't explain the why to your people mm-hmm. and you keep that why between like you just said and you, now it's open like here this is why we're doing it what do you guys think I mean are we on the right track are we not and at least get some input um, you don't I think that's also aligns with how you're building culture because even with your team being the size it is, there's still culture being developed somewhere along mm-hmm. the lines. It doesn't have to be some massive big company. You're still building culture there. We're we're getting to that in our business. Like, right? how do we get how do we give more input or get more input from our people so that it's not just her and I coming to a conclusion and then saying. This you know, is the way jam it's it down be. everybody's you know whatever and then and that's where you get resistance I think yeah that's where to change right if don't fortunately we had that very early on when I first sat down with them and said okay what are we going to name your business 
we very intentionally chose family because one thing that was important to Matt, he wanted to differentiate himself from the other hard money lenders out there that all had funding, capital, yeah. lending in there. And it was very corporate. It was very like guy in suit kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to take a more personal, transparent approach to how we uh, did loans. Um, kind of not dumbed down a little bit, but sometimes loans and lending can be very verbose and Mm -hmm. my eyes would cross instantly, you know. So, But if I can get it and we can translate that in real lay terms to people and be very open and upfront about how things work and what it costs and stuff like that, that, that's where we want to be. So we had, we at least had a core set of values and an image that we wanted from the onset and we carried that over into our team as well. So -hmm. we're very open and honest with them too. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So I know, I mean, I know we're getting close to wrapping, so I'm going to, there's a couple questions and then we'll kind of tie the, tie it up. Um, so what would be outside of like an optimizing tip, what would be the one piece of advice that you two have learned in the last, I'm going to make, I'm going to make it really difficult for you guys, in the last month that you have like, what's been an epiphany in the last month that you've been like, okay. This is a new one for us, or it's something that we got to be reminded to, to go back to the, you know, to something that's been, let's say elementary, to something you've been doing in the past, maybe got away from, but it was something that was very foundational to you guys being successful as a married couple, as business owners, and so on. For me, again, it goes back to the core of our business, and that is communication. Okay. And so I think that for me, is a challenge every day. So sometimes sucking your pride yeah. uh, and having to listen is something I'm constantly having to remind myself I need to mm-hmm. do. Um, again, because I like shiny little objects. We're, we're on the same. Say, right? we're, we're speaking to each other here. Squirrel, we're on the same. I mean? We can put a and wall so, here and let uh, them, you know. I constantly <laughs> we'll just make faces at each other while they talk. Uh, I'll have this great brainstorm. I'm like, I got a really good idea. And she's like, okay, here we go. And so, it's so uh, true. Yeah, you know, that's I, me. Yeah. Th- these are things that I constantly have to challenge myself with. And so, but then I can look at her, but from her reaction, I can tell now this is probably not the best idea to come up with, or maybe the it time is not right. It still doesn't stop him, or, whatever. But it's all going to happen. You know, um, communication, I think, is Very something good. I'm always having to work on. Awesome. So. For me, it's been the fact that... Um, over the years, it's always been kind of like me versus him if there was a difference of opinion on how to proceed. Um, and the epiphany I've had in the last month has really been, it's not a matter of me leading or him leading. Um, at at some point, we realized the person actually needed to be leading um, our team meetings and driving um, the business, at least in terms of volume, was Scott. Mm-hmm. And once we oh. gave that control over to him, mm-hmm. because he knew he's a very good uh happy medium between both of our personalities. He understands my side from underwriting and the strategic side and the process side. He understands Matt's side from the needing to harness creativity and go out and build business and things of that nature. So giving that to him not only stopped marginalizing Scott because he was really in the weeds a lot, but it took the pressure off us and trying to figure out like this little power play situation that we Mm. would often have come up on a quarterly. That delegation is huge, huh? Yeah. I mean, huge. Yeah. Especially as a small business owner, because this is like our baby, right? We're very protective of it. Very. And so for us, or especially me, to, you know, give control to somebody uh, is very difficult. Yeah. And it so, really is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So awesome. <laughs> well, thank you both for that. So to wrap up, we go into the optimizing segment of our episode. This is where we share some tips, tricks, advice uh, to other entrepreneurs or co-founders, however you want to call it, uh, co-founders. Um, so what would you recommend as an optimizing tip for somebody looking to get into business uh, from the start or somebody that is in business today? How, do, how can they further optimize their time with their family as business owners and so on? So early on, we got together um, to work on business because we love, enjoyed spending time together. But as your business scales and grows, um, you can no longer be a jack of all trades. You actually need to establish lanes and stay in them. So that was a challenge for us. But once we figured out that we really needed to um, divide and conquer so that we could accomplish everything that we needed to in a 24-hour span, both personally and professionally, mm-hmm. it was a tough pill to swallow, but it was really important for us. Yeah. Uh, The other thing about being a business owner with your spouse or partner or whatnot is you realize 
uh, you spend a lot more time together because when you think about most married couples, one spouse or partner will go out to work and they're gone for eight or ten hours where we're together for eight or ten hours plus all that time. So people who are married like ten years, that's really twenty to us, right? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, dog years. It's <laughs> dog years, right? So be careful what you wish for. So, uh, <laughs> But it's been great. We, you know, it's, it's, it's a priceless uh, business for us because, again, I love her to death. We just spend time together all the time. And even though we may want to k- kill each other most of the time, <laughs> you know, we still get to spend time together. Well, you're here. You're here right now. So nobody's dead. And, so it's good. Well, we do yeah. have a good personal, okay, personal tip. This might be too much information. We feel like, you know, you guys came from previous relationships and we're trying not to make the same mistakes that we did before, which would be like trying to change the other person. I tried that before. That doesn't work. The other thing is like oftentimes in relationships, I feel like intimacy is used as a weapon or a means of punishment or a means of achieving what you want the other person to do. And we made a rule very early on that we wouldn't do that. Oh, and so good. it it creates this barrier or protection of our own personal relationship cool. with each other so that that can never be a problem. Wow. So, so she can never say one. no at night. <laughs> 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 Well, at least you always end, end with a happy ending. Or whatever you want to call it. So. <laughs> we we did it. get warned they were open. I know, I know. I love it. I love it. Well, thank so. you both. Awesome. And thank you guys for being yeah. with us. And thanks for watching. Um, we'll see you next time on Co-Founder Friday.